All right. Uh, hey, everyone. What I need you to do is to, from our classroom, download the receipt1.txt. I just add, we're going to look at three different data sets. Don't know if we'll get them all done in this lesson, but we'll start. The whole purpose of this lesson is look at handling uh, two column data. If you're having trouble downloading this, it helps if you click on the three dots and say open in a new window, and then you get the download uh, indicator here. So the very short data set, probably not that interesting, but you can imagine if this had thousands of lines of data, um, that we, this would be helpful. I want you to match this a very simple grocery store receipt. This is the quantity of items that were bought at this price. And we're simply going to figure out how much they owe. Okay? That's going to be our goal. We're going to figure out how much... Um, how much we we need to buy to um i mean how much money we need to buy all these different things that that's our goal so if you would download that receipt for me and let's put it in a a folder um i've got here our file reading unit in our computer science uh i'm calling it grocery underscore store for my folder okay and i think you can see we've got several different data files we're going to go through but right now we are on receipt one Receipt one, and we're going to make a Python file to uh, handle that. All right. So I'll make a new file here, and I'm going to save this file in the folder that I just created. And let's call it grocery store. Same name as the folder, but that's okay. All right. So today, to do what we're going to do today, we're going to be looking at two-column data. And how we're going to do this is we're going to make a list. So I want to talk about, um, let's see here, um, I'll call it uh, grocery line or something or or items, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> to make a list in Python, you use these square brackets. And if you leave them empty, then you have to use a pinned to put to put things in it. But if you if they're not empty, you can just put stuff in it right away. So let's imagine that we had um, five comma six point seven five. Now, when we deal with our program, those will actually be strings. So we'll have to use int on the first number and float on the second. So you can see we have this items list, okay? And if I want to get the first number, say that's the, the number of items that I get, uh, let's call that uh, quantity. I can get that by saying items bracket zero because the first item in the list is index zero so you see how five became that and then i can get the price by saying uh items bracket one since that's the oops items bracket one because that's the second number in that list then i can get the total or maybe i'll just say the cost by multiplying these two numbers together and that's that's going to be the idea so our our goal for this receipt, let me pull this up again, is we're going we're gonna to go through this um, receipt here one line at a time, and we're going to put each, each line, we're going to put in a list. Then we're going to take them out of the list and, and put them in a quantity and price, multiply them together, and we'll add that to our running total. Okay, so let's get straight to it. All right, I'm going to be opening a file, and remember, you needs to be you need to save it in the same folder that has this file, or or move this file to that folder. So I'll just call it file, open, and it's called grocery store. I think no, it's not. I'm sorry, that's the name of my Python file. It's called receipt, R E C E I P T. dot text now the default when you open a file is it's it's r for read if you want to write you have to put um 
you have to say the mode is W. Uh, I'm just going to leave it blank because I'll go. With, I'm reading it, so that's fine. Okay. Now we're going to loop through the file. So before I loop through the file, though, I'm going to set up a variable to count my total price, which I'll start at zero. Then for line in file. That's how. That's the typical way to iterate through a file. There are some kind of other more advanced ways, but uh, for line and file means it's going to go through each line of the file, the entire line, one at a time. We're going to now make a list out of that line. Uh, let's call it, uh, just like before, I'm going to call it items. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a nice little method called split. So down here in the interactive shell, let me show you how that works. Each line comes in as a string, and strings have um, some methods associated with them. So there's my, there's my, uh, my string, hello worlds of strings. Uh, if I, but because it's an object, just like a turtle object has forward, left, right, um, and our actors in, in had different methods like collide rect, strings have methods as well. Oh, I've said words. So you can see, you know, we can capitalize, which will capitalize just the first letter. We have all these different things. Some of these are actually fairly advanced, like, Sciencey computer sciencey stuff to do, um, but what we're going to look at is just split. Okay, and so we say words dot split, and you can see that it returns a list where each different word is a different element. Now you can also change what you split around. Like if for some reason it's comma separated, which we'll look at later, you could split around a comma. You just put that in the parentheses, but the default is uh, space. All right. So back here, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have lines that split. Okay. Just want to go ahead and print that out right quick. We'll cut that obviously we're not done with this uh, program yet, but I do want you to see what's happening. So there we go. We'll just run that right quick. Make sure that everything's coming in good. It's always a good idea to run your code in 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 stages. You know, to see that you're especially when you're dealing with data to make sure you're getting it in correctly. Definitely looks like we're we're getting the data in correctly. Notice how each one of these. Um, each one of these lists contains strings. Because remember, it's a string. The file comes in as a string. So I'm going to say my, my quantity is the first number. Okay? Quantity. Uh, and so it's an integer value. So I'll say int items bracket 0. So that's going to take the first item in the list... Remember the uh, the list start counting at zero, and it's going to make it an int. So it's just going to it's just going to take off those quotes, okay? Then the price. Now the price has decimals, so we'll have to use float for floating point. And there we go. So the cost is going to be the quantity times the price. And I can simply make my total increase by that cost. Could have done that all in one line, but you know, I felt like that kind of made sense. So. so first, we split the line to get a list of all the things in the line. Next, we get the quantity from the first item. We get the price from the second item. We figure out the cost, and then we go from there. And after we're done closing the file, we're just going to print it out. And so you can see it's 76.12. So that's how much money we need. All right, so um, now it's on to the next data set. 
All right, so if you can uh, go ahead and download uh, these two uh, items, remember it sometimes helps to uh, go to these, open a new window, and then download. Um, I'm sorry that it's so boring that I don't even think I changed the numbers. I just added a description of what it is. So instead of two for two ninety nine, we have um, two milk for two ninety nine, three bananas for zero point eight five, one garlic for point three four. So um, we're not going to get different answers. What we should get is the same answer, but we have to deal with this middle column. Okay. So uh, let's take a look at that. We're gonna we're gonna download it and make sure you save it in the same folder that you're working in. And we're gonna just change this code now to say receipt to text. Okay. Now with this one here, our quantity is the first item, but our price is not the second is the third. So this is index zero, index one, index two. So the only change we have to make now is to put a two there. And we should get that it's all the same, right? All right. Next, we're going to deal with, uh, so just make sure you got that to right to work. And then what we're going to do is we're going to deal with the, the final situation, uh, which is data set three. Okay, so for the final, like, uh, iteration of this pr little assignment, it starts off the same way. We got two milk for two ninety nine. We got three bananas, one bolt garlic. Whoa, bolt garlic, that's two words though because this would be zero one two and then that's three well there's lots of different things that we can do we can we can start looking at whether or not a string contains a number and so we could look at each string individually and see if it contains a number but if we notice there's really a still a, still a very simple thing with this list the first item is the quantity and the last item is always the price how many items are in the list? You know, some of them have one, two, three, four. Others have five. That changes. But it's always the last item. So let's take a look at how to do that. Python makes that really easy. So if I have, um, if I have a list called stuff, okay, and I'm just going to put some letters in here. All right, so I've got a list now that I've created. We know that the first item is always at zero. And we we could figure out that the last item, if I count, there's, one, let's see here, six items, right? I could even say Lynn stuff is six. So I can say stuff. Uh, now, it won't be six, though. That's going to be an error. Because remember, if you start counting it, if you start counting at zero, that's zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So yeah, it's that it's, it's not it's not um, it's not the length. It's one less than it. So th that's the last item of my list, right? Here, let me clear that out, and we'll do that. Show that again. But if your list is changing in size, you know, we could do that. We could say like uh, size is equal to we could actually code it this way in our in our program loop, and then we know the size, and then we could say stuff bracket size minus one, and and get the last value that way. But Python makes it really easy. This is unique to Python. I don't know of another language that has this. You can put in a negative number, and the negative numbers start counting from the back. So if you put in, so if A is at index zero, moving to the left, this becomes negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. So the last number is at index negative one. I can go all the way to negative six, which is the A again. But just like before, you can go too far. So it won't wrap back around. But most important there is to remember that negative one is the last item in a list. So 
let's use that. Let's say instead of saying a 2, let's say a negative 1. And just like that, we've all we've automatically fixed it. And now we can read this pretty complicated thing. So it's time for us to actually make a receipt for our um, for our customer. So we're going to create a file, and I'll call it uh, customer receipt. Or I'll I'll just call it receipt. But the file I'll call customer receipt. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say Jed's feed bag. You know, feel free to say something like, you know, you clean them, we cook them. I don't know. Whatever you want to do to to say this is this is my this is my store, right? Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say uh, receipt dot write. We're gonna say quantity. Item, uh, uh, item, price, total, so that we'll know each amount, okay? Now, as we go through the, as we go through the, um, information here because this receipt I, I guess I, I shouldn't have called it a receipt this is in case you're wondering this is what the scanner is bringing up is, is that this is working as, as, the, as the teller is scanning our groceries okay well we're just going to convert this information onto their receipt so we're going to do that right here all this is great okay this is going to calculate a lot of the stuff that we need okay so we're going to say uh, receipt dot right first thing we're going to put is the quantity so we got to string it because remember we read from a file it comes in as a string we write to a file it goes as a string <gasps> i just remembered something look at line two when we opened our file we forgot to tell python we were writing to it we got to say mode equals write so put a w there do single or double quotes it doesn't matter so we're going to do quantity. Then we need to write the item. So actually, um, we're gonna we're not gonna do that. We're gonna put the entire line right there. Sorry about that. We're gonna put the entire line right there in our receipt, but we don't want we don't want the we don't want that new line value. All right, no, my bad, I forgot something. Oh, we are doing it that way. All right, so what was our for we're going back we have? What do we had? We had um String the quantity, right? All right, now we got to put in our description of the items. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say um, items index 1 to negative 1. And I think that'll work, but it might have some commas. And if it does, oh well. So we'll string that because we, we don't want the list. We want a string. So that should take us from the second item on the row all the way up to and not including the last item because it includes this value but not that one. 
and then we'll write the price Sorry, I'm adding tabs to this. So a tab slash T makes a tab, like a five indent or whatever, or four indent, four spaces. Okay, and then we're going to write the total cost. There we go. So then when we're all done with that, we'll just write, uh, well, we got to do a new line, right? That'll make it move down the new line. And then when we're all done, we'll say receipt dot write total And what was it called? Total. There we go. And don't forget to close your file, especially when you're writing. It won't actually write. You'll have a blank data file if you don't close it. All right. So I think this will be close to right. Um, you know, sometimes I have ideas in my head, and then when I get to do them, I'm like, oh, we don't know that yet. So <laughs> we didn't really know this yet. Um, so don't worry about that too much. I. I just wanted to have them there. And they're probably going to have commas, but I don't want to go over how to get rid of the commas. Okay. I before E except after C. Isn't that weird? Okay, it's still doing it. I did it again. All right. Okay. We should have, we should have a data file. There it is. Behold. Yay! Oh, look at that. So we still got we have we have some issue here. We have our data file printouts a little bit funky, but it looks like we got a lot of formatting to learn. Um, and that's okay. And this is a this is a rounding issue. We could we could definitely round to two decimals. And then this is not having enough zeros. And we can go through all that, but I'm going to tell you, I typically go through formatting uh, with, my with my Computer Science 2 class more. Because, boy, if you want to just, like, if you can't sleep at night, open up a book on, like, proper text formatting in Computer Science. You'll, yeah, you'll just go right to sleep, man, right to sleep. I don't understand what's going on here. All right. Well, if you're curious about getting rid of the of the extra stuff, use this dot replace, and it finds that and replaces it with that. So I replace the comma with the space, the apostrophe with nothing, that with nothing, that with, and I just kept calling it over and over and over again. And it kind of gives you this thing here. It looks like there's actually too many spaces. I probably don't need that space there. Uh, but again, it's still not perfectly formatted. But again, we're we're going to learn how to format things in nice tables. That will that will happen um, later. Um, <laughs> probably not this year though. But uh, at least we're learning how to write to a file, and we're learning how to read a file, and and do some you know kind of some important real worldy kind of stuff. So I uh, hope you got something out of that. And we'll be able to make use of it.